My name is George Somro, and I'm the director of Stanford University's Hopkins Marine Station in Pacific Grove, California. We are the oldest marine lab on the West Coast, dating back to 1892 at the founding of Stanford University. I've been studying the effects of temperature and salinity uh, since the middle 1960s, and I think the work has gone very well. I've been elected to the National Academy of Sciences. We've had very strong support from federal and um, and state agencies for our research. We have quite a track record. We have over 200 publications on the topics of temperature and, and salinity effects. Uh, our, liter our, our papers have been the most cited in the field. So I think we have a credibility, and I think, I, I think it's well-deserved, you know, speaking somewhat, somewhat egotistically. Um, we felt for many years that it's very important to characterize what even relatively small changes, what may seem small to humans, but to marine organisms could be very strong effects, looking at how very subtle differences in temperature, subtle differences in, in the salinity in which marine animals live, will impact their functioning. And what we've shown is that Surprisingly small amounts of change in temperature or salinity can have very strong effects on marine organisms. And that's why I've, I've been so interested in this shipboard desalination technology because it looks like a way of, of minimizing the sorts of effects that we've been finding in our studies uh, that could be very, very significant perturbations of marine ecosystems, which because of climate change and pollution are already taking a hit in a lot of areas. And you know, let's be as nice to these ecosystems as we can as we move example, into here in Monterey County, there's a real shortfall of water. We're drawing down the water table too fast. We're getting intrusion of seawater into agricultural areas where the water is being pumped out very fast. So I studied the technology, and the engineering is really interesting. Uh, it's, it's beneficial to the marine environment relative to shore-based desalination because you're taking in water further out to sea where there's going to be less marine life. The water is cleaner. There's less of a sludge problem. Uh, the release of the brine, there's no thermal stress, there's, there's, there's minimal salinity stress. So the whole technology looks like a really nice package as far as solving a really critical problem. And the problem of supplying water in Monterey County kind of reflects problems that are going to be appearing all around the world. As populations grow, uh, populations are increasingly concentrated in coastal areas where there's often a very short supply of fresh water. So to me, it looks like a win-win situation. And it'll provide water to, to support existing populations, uh, and it'll, it'll, it'll reduce the amount of water that's being taken out of aquifers or, or tapped off of rivers. For example, in Monterey, that'll be beneficial to the steelhead runs in the Carmel River. And for agriculture, by reducing the amount of seawater intrusion that's going on as the water table is being drawn down uh, by tapping the aquifers, it'll be, it'll be beneficial for agricultural interests as well as people interested in sport fishing. So it, it really looks like promising technology. I mean, the bottom line is we need to get more fresh water. And finding the right way to do that uh, is going to be critical. And I think this this technology of water standards looks to me like the best bet for doing that. You know, the technology uh, may sound complicated if you look at engineering diagrams, but in reality it's very simple. Uh, Seawater is mostly water, but it does contain a lot of salt. You have to remove that salt. When you do that effectively, then you have as pure drinking water as you, as you could desire or find anywhere. Um, in fact, seawater may be, may be more pure in terms of, of dangerous chemicals than water that's coming off the land. So seawater is a really good source of, of fresh water. Get rid of those salts. The reverse osmosis process, which has been used in shore-based and ship-based installations for a long, long time, it's off-the-shelf technology, that pulls the salts out of the, out of the water, leaving just the water behind, and that water then is, is of, of, of a high state of purity, ready for use in, in drinking water systems or for other uh, times where you need potable water. You know, there really, I don't see any downsides in the uh, shipboard technology that the water standards company is, is, is engineering. The, the impacts on the marine realm are going are to be minimal, uh, so there's really no downside as far as I can see in terms of any stress from temperature or from salinity. There's obviously a concern about, well, if you make another 50 million gallons of water, can you bring another 4 million people into the area? That's a political decision. That's separate from the engineering decision. You know, scientists commonly have this problem of, well, we've engineered some nifty new technology what are the downstream impacts going to be on society? And that's where the whole community has to come in and make decisions. So by increasing the availability of fresh water, I think we're solving a lot of problems. Will that lead to more development? That's something which, you know, the engineers are not going to make that decision. They're giving you the technology to use. And then people, politicians, the communities have to decide how much water is going to be used and what that water will support in terms of growth. But certainly the upside of an increased water supply is that there will be very positive environmental effects uh, in terms of 
aquifer issues and river issues. So that's why I think it's, it's something which really should be explored. I think the consequences are going to be very positive.